I'm an old school Ninja Turtle fan. Like I ride with the 1980 Turtles. So all the new stuff that's coming out, automatically I'm hesitant with it because I just don't like new stuff. Like I just like the stuff that I like, the stuff that brought memories to me, um, you know, all the feel good stuff that the all the stuff that happened that made it important to me is why I love TMNT so much. So with all the new stuff that's coming out, I've, you know, I've just been kind of like, you know, I can leave it or whatever. But I started reading the IDW comics. And I enjoy it. I do. I like it very much. And I really just started. I waited because I just didn't want to read new shit. I I like the Archie comics because it's similar to the 87 cartoons, yes. which is what I grew up on. Right. Um, and then people were telling me that the IDW comics are, are darker and more mature and more adult. And I just didn't think of my Ninja Turtles that way, since I always think of them as the 87 cartoons. So I held back on that. Um, but the reason why I bring up the IDW comics is because the IDW comics really opened up my eyes and all the other stuff that was happening around it. Um, the last Ronin and stuff like that. It brought a lot of people around. That there are multiple universes of Ninja Turtles. Um, and just because there's different universes doesn't take away from the things that you really enjoy from the Ninja Turtles. And that was one of the things that I was having a hard hump getting over with Mutant Mayhem, the movie, because it's completely different, right? From anything that we've ever had with the Ninja Turtles. Uh, they're acting and speaking like actual teenagers. Right. Um, they really had no, no ninja skills. Like there was a lot of stuff that was just way off from anything that I've ever seen with the Ninja Turtles. So from the beginning, I was just like, eh, I don't, I don't know if this is. And then with it being Nickelodeon, which I am a huge Nickelodeon fan. Shout out to Nickelodeon. Don't take me off your sponsors. Um, I was like, okay, I don't, I don't, I don't know if this is going to be a good fit for the old school, since the '80s, you know, Ninja Turtle fans. But I was able to get past all of that stuff and look at it as just a completely different universe, a completely different take on the Ninja Turtles, just something different and refreshing. I understand that Mutant Mayhem was not set for my generation. It's for the newer, younger, upcoming mm -hmm. generation. Um, so those aren't, my, those aren't my Ninja Turtles, but I thought the story was interesting. I thought the 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 action and the comedy, I thought it was pretty good. So I have no problem going around saying that I I enjoyed the movie. I enjoyed that movie more than I enjoyed the Michael Bay films. And I thought the Michael Bay films was okay. I, I, I thought it was, the action was really good. It was something we never had, but the actual storylines and how the turtles, you know, converse and all that kind of stuff. I wasn't really a fan of, but yeah. I thought Mutant Mayhem, I thought, uh, what's his name? Roe and um, Seth Rogen. I thought they, I thought they brought something different. I thought it was still respectful. They had like the, you know, the little things to give tribute to the old school Ninja Turtles. So with them doing that, then I was like, I don't know. It was, like, it was like, it's respect. Like, this is a good story. This is your story. It's its own story. But you're not forgetting, you know, where we came from. And them doing, like, Laird's uh, restaurant or Laird's place or whatever yeah. and all the different things. Yeah, I, I, I thought that was really good. Like a kid voice cameo of one of the characters. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The only thing that I was just kind of weird with was um, some of the... <laughs> Some of the other characters, like how they looked and how they acted, you know, <laughs> like Gecko and Ray Filet, uh, Leatherhead. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't understand why they changed sexes. You know, like Leatherhead's always been a scary yeah. dude, and now he's kind of just like an Australian chick. So that was weird. Um, 
But all in all, yeah, I liked it. So I, I, anyone that wants to come argue, like old old school Ninja Turtle fans that want to argue with me, I'm here for it. Uh, because like everything else that happens in life, like there's involvement and there's change. And I went to the San Diego Comic-Con uh, this year and oh. sat in the panel with um, the last Ronin crew, right? Which included Kevin Eastman. And when Kevin Eastman said that he was on board with this movie, I was like, how could the rest of us not, right? Like, if the co-creator can co-sign and say, this is a good movie, check it out. Now, I know he's not going to be like, oh, this is trash, you know, but he did seem really excited about it. And then I saw him at the pre-screening at Paramount Pictures uh, the week after he was there. We watched the movie together. Um, and, you know, he was excited then. And I was like, yeah, this movie is it's good. Like, it, it's a good movie. It's it's not a great movie. Master Splinter not having in, any type of ninjutsu skills is Different. offsetting. Yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, I like my Master Splinter to be like, a, you know, IDW or 2012 series, even 87 cartoons. So for him just kind of being like a loser was different but you know different can be good with the good story so obviously with the way that they ended it uh we have a lot to look forward to to see you know what else they're gonna they're gonna yeah. do with that yeah I, I, it, it was enough to spark my curiosity and like to see where it goes i can say that much i enjoyed it for what it was didn't you get excited at the end by the oh, way, yeah. when you showed Shredder? i was like Definitely. That's what we wanted. Yeah, whenever we you wanted to see Shredder. Anything with the turtles without Shredder, if it's somewhat enjoyable, then you did good, in my opinion, because it's hard. It's hard to pull that off without Shredder. You know, it's very, very difficult because everyone was thinking like, "Well, okay, so this is a completely different story," and I hope that they clean up Rocksteady and Bebop. Right, because Rocksteady and Bebop are not Team Turtles. So with Shredder being in the picture now, um, it, it it should be good. I liked it. I, I like the animation. It's different. It's fresh for the Turtles. Um, I thought the comedy was for the kids and also for the adults. I mean, how could you not like Ice Cube Superfly? You know, mm -hmm. like that was a good character, right? <laughs> He's great. <laughs> So I love it. Yeah, I'm repping Mutant Mayhem um, as much as I can. And I stayed true. I was not repping any Mutant Mayhem until I saw the movie. Like, I just didn't want to be that go, go, go person. Now I'm stuck saying go, go if I thought it sucked, right? So I waited and I was like, okay, yeah, this is this is a good turtle movie. I think we can get behind this. That's a, that's a pretty good uh, analysis on it. Hell yeah. Dude, I have had plenty of time to think about this <laughs> and talk about it. 